are offended by the use of explicit language and references, then please click away. This is not a public service announcement. All praise is due to Allah, and we ask that Allah send His peace and blessings on Prophet Muhammad, as well as on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. Can fingering a girl crack an egg? Can you straighten out a curved saber? Can it snap in half? What's the difference between a hooker and a stripper? And then hundreds of questions about G-spots and fapping and pregnancies. As a high school teacher, I have had some interesting conversations about SEX with my Muslim students. And so I just say, why don't you just ask your parents? And they always say, well, you don't know my parents. <laughs> you talk to them. So I do, I reach out. And the parents ask me questions too. I found porn on my son's computer. What should I do? How do I know if my teen has had sex? What is a chicken party? Today we are living and breathing in a hypersexualized world. Kids are embarking on a journey and you didn't prepare the itinerary. And if this is difficult for you to swallow, know that it's frustrating for your children too. They have to explore the world of sex and love and porn on their own without a map. And yet we expect them to magically come out of this pure and innocent. These children don't have the vocabulary to understand what is happening. Most nine-year-olds may not know what a BJ is, but they've heard it. And they know that it's thrilling. And they know that you don't like it. This is not another talk about Islam and sex. Unfortunately, it's not even about sex because those are easy. This is a talk about talking. Sex contributes more to our identities than our DNA, our culture, or even our religion. We all have sexual identities. I call it honor. Our honor gets shaped every day. It's everywhere. It's your language. It's what you see and hear. Honor shapes who you marry and the quality and success of your marriage. Honor is helping our children develop healthy sexual identities. So many problems that exist in adult relationships today stemmed from damaged sexual identities. We traumatize children with stories of STDs and date rape and homosexuality through lectures about the hellfire and brimstone. So is it any surprise that they consider sex a, a shameful act or an inevitable evil? Instead, we must balance that with discussions on the joys of sexuality. Your bodies are sacred. Pleasure is a gift. And learning about our sexuality and getting freaky is one of the joys of adulthood. If you get nothing else from this message, then please remember that honor begins in the home. You, mom and dad, need to talk to your kids about sex. Parents should be the primary sexual edu educators of their children. Don't outsource this. Schools have to be politically correct. It's like a joke. Don't tell their, your children to talk to their auntie Minu about sex. It's so awkward. And please don't send them to the imam. That's traumatic for both the imam and your kids. Some kids ask the imam, is, is a money shot allowed in Islam? And some, kid, some imams can scare the kids away from any intimacy. And please don't Google it in front of them. There's stuff out there that you just can't unsee. My point is that if you don't talk to them, then the Bang Brothers will. And they're not real. Adults tend to forget that you were adolescents too, where you were, you were, you were excited, aroused, insecure, scared about the size of your penis or breasts, you pleasured yourself, you were afraid to discuss your thoughts, actions, and fantasies with your own parents. And that is exactly why you are the perfect person to discuss it with your own children. You were in their shoes not that long ago. And I know your parents didn't talk to you about this. I know it's hard to discuss it with your own kids, but if you don't, then an eight-year-old with, with an iPhone will show your second grader a dancing bear video. 
So how or where do we begin? Honor is not a big talk. It's a series of continuing conversations. Are, are manners a big talk? Is Islam a big talk? Important topics take time. There are literally hundreds of mini talks. How we treat people, boundaries, attraction, trust, family values, lust, logistics. There is a single unifying thread behind all of these mini talks. And that's desire. Desire is just a form of energy. It's exactly the same as hunger or, or, or anger, which means we control it. We direct it. And those are the same muscles that help us wait for the lasagna and not eat the donut now. I know it's tempting, deep fried sugar. Oh, it's cheap and it's easy. But afterwards, you feel gross and it hurts when you pee. But trust me, the lasagna is worth the wait. Kids are looking for ways to deal with desire. They know that they need to delay sexual activity. And they want to be honorable. Behind lust and desire is shaitan. Arm your children with two words that the enemy hates. Delayed gratification. We don't have the time for concrete steps at every age bracket. But here are a few guidelines. Take advantage of teachable moments. Number one, timing is essential. You just saw something shady in the checkout line? Have a quick conversation. My strategy is to ask what if questions. What if your sister walked out of the house wearing that? Number two, keep it short and simple. One kid ran home and asked, Mommy, where, where do I come from? So she got all flustered and and she spilled her guts and she gave him all the details about sexual intercourse, sperm, the egg, the birthing process. And after all this, the kid looks up and says, wow, Yusuf is from India. Wait till I tell all the other kids at school where I'm from. Number three, get your children involved in after school activities. Those help create feelings of self-worth and positive identity and spending time with a soccer team helps them burn energy. And number four, pay attention to youth culture. Watch their shows. Listen to what they listen to. Get on Twitter and Instagram. Try to keep up with messaging about drinking, fashion, and sex. And please remember that you are dealing with a with an animal whose brain has not yet fully developed. Honor is a process, not a confrontation. I want to switch gears and address the students, and, and I mean by that anyone who's not married. Number one, what you do has consequences. Whether it's a tiny hit of crack, your first puff, downloading some porn, or even having sex. Later in life, if you found out that your spouse even got to second base with someone long before you got married, you wouldn't be cool about it. Having a sexual history is toxic baggage that you take with you into every relationship. Those are dirty secrets that you have to hide for the rest of your life. And bottling all that negative energy is cancerous. However, regardless of how ugly your past has been, you can change your future. You don't have to act out because of your brokenness or because you've been hurt. You can be rescued and renewed by the grace of Allah. He can restore your honor. Number two, sex is fun. And when you have a partner, then it is epic. And when both of you are deeply in love with each other and committed to each other, then it is epic -er. And it's good for you, not just physically, but emotionally and mentally. Something amazing happens after sex. You can finally focus. Allah gave it to us as a gift. The fact that we even have this is a sign of an amazing creator. And the epicest part is that in Islam, sex is a form of worship. Obviously, when it is with your spouse. 
And if all of that is not enough, you can get as much booty as you want in Jannah. Allah promises you beautiful companions in paradise. For what? Let me close with this. My challenge to you is to bring honor back. Talk to your parents. Talk to your kids. If you can talk about honor with your family, then you will easily be able to discuss everything else. But if you don't talk about honor, it doesn't matter what you do talk about. Thank you for making it to the end of this. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum.